friends, it has been a very long time since I've done one of these topic simplified videos. I actually can't even remember the last time I did one of these, but today we are going to be talking about both Botox and Argireline simplified. Let me start out this video by telling you my motivation for sitting down today and making this today's video topic. You probably have a clue if you've seen me rant about the prevalence of people calling things that are not Botox, Botox. I've seen people call hydrating masks, moisturizing moisturizers, Botox for some reason, LED therapy, Botox for some reason, and the latest I heard was flaxseed is nature's Botox. Do you want to know what nature's Botox is? It's botulinum toxin. It's all natural. This is the problem with the appeal to nature fallacy. Have people forgotten that they bought Socrates' final drink at a natural health food store? And while some people clearly don't know what Botox is, I think a lot of people do know that it freezes the muscles. That's what it does in the skin. But I think if we explain why it does that, I think you will understand why the argireline peptide claims to be Botox in a bottle. The Ordinary's argireline solution does not, but more on that later. I think a lot of things will click. I think you will understand what's going on with this peptide serum versus this injectable treatment. Timestamps and links are in the description box below as always, and this is this is my closest to dressing for whatever theme we would have today. I, uh, I, I chose a wig that does not have bangs. I don't have a lot of those because they, they look a little, they look a little more weak, but we've got to have the forehead out for this video. Obvi we have to. Part one, Botox versus Argireline, the mechanism. Botox, truly one of the most dangerous substances in the world, was discovered to have this amazing application in terms of beauty. Scientists discovered that there's actually different types of Botox and they act on different proteins. The one of interest is a protein named SNAP25. I know this could still look intimidating, but we are only following SNAP25 and I genuinely think if you too can follow this SNAP25 protein, you are going to be so much smarter about this topic. You're going to understand its role in regular muscle movement, in the presence of Botox, and in the presence of Argireline. What you're looking at is a rough diagram of the way your body sends messages into your muscle cell. Those little blue bo Alice, those little blue circles, we will call them, represent the messages. Do you want to raise an eyebrow? This is how your body does that, through those blue circles reaching the muscle cell. Again, only one protein that you need to know about today is SNAP25. It is going to form a complex with those other proteins. Think of SNAP25 as a key it's required to unlock this whole mechanism. And that complex is required in order for this action to take place. Now this is in the presence of Botox. As many of you know, Botox is injected into the muscle cell, but it actually has to come back out of the muscle cell in order to do what we know it to do. Botox type A specifically, represented by the yellow balls, cleaves SNAP25. It cuts it into pieces. Again, thinking of SNAP25 as a key, it is broken in this scenario. There is no way to unlock the mechanism. And because SNAP25 is cut into pieces, it cannot form that complex with the snare proteins. You do not get any fusion of the membrane and therefore those messages represented as the blue circles are not delivered into the muscle cell. So where does our Giraline come into the picture? Well, Botox, Type A, the most perfectionist type, was a massive success. People were loving it, the risks were low, albeit present, and a team of scientists said, well, this is all based on this SNAP25 protein. The scientists said, what about if we create a peptide that looks just like SNAP25? Here is that same scenario, but in the presence of the argireline peptide. It was intentionally designed to look like the SNAP25 protein so that it competes with the real SNAP25 and per Lipotech can even form the required snare complex. But it is not SNAP25, so those blue circle messages cannot be relayed into the muscle cell. 
thereby you would have an inhibition of regular muscle movement. Oh, how you know the scientists said, oh snap, when they did this. Thinking back to SNAP25 as a key, imagine it as one of those keys that looks like the right key, it fits in the lock, but it doesn't turn the lock. Have you all had this happen? Have you all had one of those keys that looks like your house key and you accidentally keep putting it in your door and going, Ugh, wrong key. And in the lab, this meant a 43% inhibition. This means less movement of the muscles, not a total cessation, but less movement. Now the team of scientists was very excited, but there is a catch. This was all happening in a dish. Part two, if argireline is both inspired by Botox and kind of acts like it in a dish, why is it that when you buy the ordinary products containing argireline, you don't see anything on the packaging about Botox in a bottle? This section is inspired by James Welsh, who came out with an incredible video recently on the topic of argireline versus Botox. I'll make sure to link it below. Love that he did a case study. But I want to add something to his video because I actually can give a bit of insight into answering this question from my own field. Supplements cannot make structure function claims, and there's a long list of structure function claims, and it is the same for cosmetic products. Cosmetic products cannot claim to be similar in any way to a drug, which Botox is. The most extreme claim I've ever seen is that some companies, very much including our beloved PTR, have made claims like, this product may extend the time between Botox appointments. But see, now you understand why they are making that claim. It's because this could inhibit some muscular movements, maybe. So it is true that The Ordinary isn't making these claims about being a Botox in a bottle product. But Lipotech, the manufacturer, is making these claims because they are not selling a cosmetic product. It seems that influencers are also, at least at the moment, able to make these claims, but at the very least, I would like to see them at least try to understand why. Understanding that at most you might get inhibition of the muscles as opposed to a complete cessation of movement. And part three, does argireline actually work? Does it actually inhibit muscle movement in people? As we discussed, the manufacturers saw these incredible results in a dish, but how is argireline applied? There is a very big difference between Botox and topical argireline, isn't there? You get it, right? I, I know it's a sewing needle, but that's all I have. So Lipotech did conduct their own human studies in which they had participants applying topically this argireline peptide, and they were seeing great results. They were seeing an improvement in wrinkles. But as James Welsh pointed out and many others have pointed out as well, we don't really know that that's because this inhibition is taking place deep within the skin or is it just that peptides are humectants? Sometimes we just don't give humectants enough credit for what they do. These are hydrating molecules, and when you apply them to your skin, when you increase moisture content in your skin, you do see an improvement in wrinkles. So what we have is this incredible idea, wherein the idea might compare to Botox, and it does in vitro, in a dish. And in humans, in vivo experiments have shown us that there is something happening here. But it is impossible at this point to say with confidence that it is that mechanism we described that is leading to those results. Again, it could simply be hydration. Now let me tell you a little bit of my own anecdotal experience with argireline. I am somebody who has never had Botox because I'm scared of needles. It's that simple. Some of us are. We pass out when we get our vaccinations. <laughs> what I did decide to do is buy both The Ordinary's argireline and The Ordinary's multipeptide and hyaluronic acid serum. And here's why. Given that in these human studies we see nice results, why not? These are inexpensive. Argireline solution is under $10. I feel like this is the most popular product containing argireline. Let me clarify just because I see confusion around this sometimes. It does not contain 10% of the acetylhexapeptide 8 peptide. 
That's the argireline peptide. It is in a solution where the concentration is 0.05%. But is it acting similarly to Botox? Again, we don't have scientific proof of that. So I certainly don't want to spend a lot of money here on something that isn't proven. The Ordinary allows me a budget-friendly option where if it does come out in time that this is not at all what's happening, it is just hydration, I didn't spend money unnecessarily, and I am happy with the hydration. But I will also say that in all truth, I feel I've seen a bit of inhibition. Exactly as described by Lipotech, not a 100% cessation of movement. I could still do this, but I do feel I used to have such a frowny face, and something has improved that. I work in research, so let's be honest about some possibilities here. Number one, placebo effect. Again, more people should talk about this. Placebo effect is a very real thing. You know, this is not any kind of blind study that I'm doing over here. Do I have the experimental variable or not? No, I know that I am using argireline, and I know that while the ordinary doesn't claim argireline acts like Botox, Lipotech does. And that alone could be part of why I think that this is actually giving me results. But it is also possible that some inhibition is happening. I've read a lot of other people's experiences or watched their videos about it, and I do feel I've seen a fair number of people report a similar experience to my own. And then I've also seen some people say that this did absolutely nothing for them. And there are some theories here I've seen other people say, perhaps this works better if you do have thinner skin. And this could also explain the results in terms of the eye area. The eye area is already thinner skin in comparison to your forehead. If we are seeing inhibition of muscular movement, then we are probably going to see it a bit more around the eye area in a greater number of people. But again, I'm not making this video to convince anyone to buy any products. I want this to be an informational video. That's why I'm not even bothering with any kind of before and afters. This is just about how it works. But I will say one more thing before I close out this video, since I did go ahead and bring up the Ordinary's Multipeptide Serum. This is, I'm surprised this doesn't get as much attention as Argireline. I do prefer this. I prefer it both in its texture. Argireline is very watery, which makes it kind of hard to work with. I prefer its texture and it is Argireline. In addition to other peptides, Argirolox, Matrixel, it's all here in one. Please see my Ordinary Peptides video explained if you want to know more about this. And my friends, that's all I wanted to share with you in today's video. I hope it was helpful. If you have any experience with The Ordinary's Argireline or another company's peptide product, please feel free to share your experiences in the comment section below. I truly think that we can help each other out the most by sharing our own experiences. But that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your week, and I will see you all next time.